Professor Bridges, you said several times, you've used a phrase, I want to make sure I understand what you mean by it. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. Would that be women? Many women, cis women, have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, there are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy, as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. So this isn't really a women's rights issue. It's a, it's, we can it's recognize a that this impacts women while also recognizing that it impacts other groups. Those things are not mutually exclusive, Senator Hawley. Josh Hawley is desperate. In a very general sense, he's always desperate to seem cool, to seem smart. To, he wants to be the next big thing on the right, but he just doesn't have the intellectual capability. In, he, in this specific instance, he is desperate to glom on to the transphobia that has taken over basically all of conservative thought, certainly attention recently. He thought that when Kiara Bridges, who was brought on, brought to Congress as an expert to talk about Roe v. Wade, he thought, oh, I'm gonna get you. I've heard that like they supposedly can't define women or whatever. And he looked like an absolute doink because she had indisputable, totally reasonable responses to all that. Now, there was a bit more of it. Let's jump into this. All right, so your view is, is that the core of this, this right then is about what? So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not recognizing that. Wow, you're saying that I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancies? So I'm one, I want to note that one out of five transgender uh, persons have attempted suicide. So I think it's important Because of my line of questioning? So we can't talk about it? Because denying that trans people exist and pretending not to know that they exist I'm is denying that trans people exist by asking Are you? you if you're talking Are you? about women Are you? having pregnancies. Do you believe that the, uh, men can get pregnant? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so you are denying that trans people exist. Thank and that leads to violence. Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you? Absolutely. Or are they also treated like this? Where no, no, no. They're, they're told that to they're at opening up people to oh, violence. We have a good time in my class. You should join. Oh, I bet. You might learn a lot. Wow, I, I would learn a lot. I've learned you, a lot I just know. in this exchange. Absolutely. Extraordinary. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I disagree with this final point. He apparently learned nothing. See, Josh Holly has got the smugness that the right wants, but he doesn't have the smarts. And also, he's in a difficult position there where he's not willing to be just 100% explicitly transphobic like so many on the right, whether in elected office or in the media are. He wants to pretend that that's not what he's doing. And you saw him attempting to dance around that there, but she was right. He is specifically denying the existence of trans people. And much more importantly than that, let's be clear, he started this whole thing so that he could show viewers that he doesn't give a damn about the trans committee. That's the only reason any of this started. It wasn't that incidentally he started to be transphobic. He thought, I'm gonna show my audience, my base, that I'm transphobic because they're gonna eat that up. That is disgusting. And yes, the fact that so many trans people consider or attempt suicide, that they are the targets of violence, is that individually caused by one question from Josh Hawley? No. But the ongoing cultural war that the right is enthusiastically elevating, specifically for their own political benefits, yes, that does have a cost, and it's a cost in blood for trans people. Do you remember your remarks on the floor last year when you brought this up? Um, it would, you'd have to give me a specific. I mean, I made a lot of remarks last sure. year. So I recall a story you told about your brother. Okay. And I remember you said that your brother called, or that your mother called you, I believe, to tell you that your brother had some news that he was afraid to tell you. Okay. And your brother wanted to tell you that he was gay, didn't he? Um, he was uh, expressing that to the family, and he thought that, uh, that we would hold that against him and not let my children be around him. Why do you think he thought that? I, I don't know. I, it uh, it never would have happened. I'll tell you that. My right. uh, my my kids at that that point in their life adored my uh, my brother. Can I tell you if I were your brother, I would have been afraid to tell you too. Damn, that is a raw speech for uh, current politics in America. That is Representative Ian Mackey. Uh, talking about growing up in uh, Hickory County, Missouri. Well, he's going to get into it. Um, talking there with Representative uh, Chuck Bassia. 
And look, there's a lot obviously that can play into the relationship between them that might have led to that conversation happening at all, let alone happening in such a public way. But this is a real thing. That said, let's jump into a little bit more of the comments in this. Well, I'm sorry. I would have been afraid to tell you too because of stuff like this. Because this is what you're focused on. This is the legislation you want to put forward. This is what consumes your time. I would have been afraid to tell you too. I was afraid of people like you growing up, and I grew up in Hickory County, Missouri. I grew up in a school district that would vote tomorrow to put this in place. And for 18 years, I walked around with nice people like you who took me to ball games, who told me how smart I was, and who went to the ballot and voted for crap like this. And I couldn't wait to get out. I couldn't wait to move to a part of our state that would reject this stuff in a minute. I couldn't wait, and thank God I made it. Thank God I made it out, and I think every day of the kids who are still there, who haven't made it out, who haven't escaped from this kind of bigotry. Gentlemen, I'm not afraid of you anymore, because you're gonna lose. You may win this today, but you're going to lose. I absolutely love that. So look, the stakes right now is this bill to like a lot of states, red states have been doing to ban uh, transgender athletes, uh, specifically here transgender girls from competing on girls sports teams. Uh, it's it's bigotry as was identified in that video, that's what it is. And specifically, uh, Ian Mackey uh, back when he was in, uh, in 2004, back when he was a high school senior, when he was in the position that now the uh, trans kids are being victimized in the same way. Missouri passed an amendment to ban same-sex marriage with more than 70% of voters in support. That was 18 years ago. And where have we gone from there? Have we have we progressed from there? Have we evolved? That uh, the 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 bigotry, the homophobia is coming in a slightly different form, but the goal is the same. The the demonization is the same, Brett. I love that that defense there of Ian Mackin, especially saying that he's not scared of them anymore, that he's gonna fight. This is this is what we need right now. Yeah, and they're the same a-holes. The people voting to ban transgender athletes are the same a-holes that voted to ban gay marriage. They're the same people doing, I would argue, in many cases, whether it's in Missouri or Texas or Florida, the exact same thing. And what is that thing? It's not allowing other people to exist as themselves. That's it. Yep. And so when I hear people on the right say that we don't want big government controlling our lives, and then they pass laws that ban the discussion, the the what the discussion of sexuality or or gender, which is basically discussion banning a discussion of who people are and objective reality. How are these the same people? No, yeah. it comes back to them being oppressive. And so when I see things like the banning of discussions from people on the right, all I see is hatred. And if you're worried, all the people, all those same people on the right are like, well, I just am afraid of that moment when we lose American democracy and the promise of America. That's it. The stuff they're always afraid the left's gonna do and ban and tell you how to be. How can you tell people how to be more than saying you can't have your own gender identity? Yeah. Especially when it affects no one else and doubly especially when it has to do with like kids soccer. 100%. Get over yeah, it. It's so, it's so see Kids soccer sucks. It doesn't matter. Well, that's, it doesn't that's matter. Beside the Put point, them on the same yeah. team. It's just gonna be a clump of kids kicking each other in the shins. 